प्रभुतव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, Thakurji Maharaj, our pathmaker to our liberation, Pujapad dear Guruji, Jai Santo, and all of the Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, Jai Swami Narayan. This week we are going to uh, continue on our UA course layout for the English department for course number eight. <clears throat> Just to recap, this course contains the Vachnamrut Kadrida middle chapter 59th, titled Ultimate Liberation, a vat from Sadguru Gunati Tanan Swami, and finally a charitra from uh, Sadguru Adi Shri Adi, Adi Guru Shri Muktanan Swami. So we'd like to begin with this Vachnamrut on Gadrida middle chapter 59th. <clears throat> Swami Narayan Hare. So I'm going to introduce the watch number to all of you by just saying the first uh, half. On Shravan Sud 12th, Samwat 1881, American date August 6th, 1824, Swami Sri Sajanji Maharaj was sitting on a large decorated cot on the veranda outside the mandir of Sri Vasudeva Narayan in Dada Khachar's Darbar in Kadra. He was dressed entirely in white clothes at that time, an assembly of munis as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him. As usual, this is the layout for this Vachnamrut. <clears throat> now, this Vachnamrut is so important that Nan Santo gave it the title Ultimate Liberation. From time in and out, ever since Bhagwan, there has been this soul not one soul but innumerable souls and ever since that time there is no time we cannot fathom or we cannot put into borders the time how old Bhagwan is or even each and every soul yet if you think about it we are currently on earth and still traveling in this body of human maybe previously of an animal or an organism, yet we have not attained ultimate liberation, meaning we have not attained akshradham, which is ultimate. Due to that, this very Vachnamrut will explain to us how to attain ultimate liberation in a very, very easy and short manner. If we follow this, you can say, cure or you can say this antidote then we would be easily able to attain Bhagwan's divine abode Akshradham and stop or put a stop to this cycle of life and death and remain there at peace with Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Murti and his Mukto. <clears throat> Thereupon Sriji Maharaj said in the four Vedas the Purans and the Itihas scriptures. There is but one central principle, and that is that only God and His Son can grant liberation. In fact, God's Son is greater than even Bhav, Brahma, and other deities. So when one attains God or His Son, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jew. 
This itself is ultimate liberation. This is the first paragraph to this Vajnamrut. Very, very short, but very, very effective. Maharaj says in the four Vedas, Hinduism, the whole philosophy is completely based off of the four Vedas. The four Vedas have come from God. And it, the Vedas are the most ancient scriptures on earth even till this day. And Hinduism, may we know it, may we not know it, is the oldest religion on this earth as well. There are many religions in the world that believe in different various avatars, incarnations, deities, so on and so forth. But out of, out of all those religions, Hinduism is the oldest. And the Vedas are the oldest scriptures as well on this earth. The Purans and the Ityas, there is but one, cent one central principle, meaning Bhagwan Swami Narayan, what he did that was so <coughs> easy for the soul to attain liberation was he extracted one sentences, one sentence or two sentences from these great massive and hard to understand scriptures and gave it to us like this. And how fortunate we are that these nun santos jotted it down, wrote it all down, compiled it, verified it to Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and then gave it to us as a gift, we can say. Bhagwan Swami Narayan did not say, go and read the Vedas. Bhagwan Swami Narayan did not go and say that read the Purans and Itihas and find out that principle, and from there you will attain ultimate liberation. Instead, due to his compassionate nature, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, here, let me do all that, and you just follow what I say. Very simple and very, very efficient as well. Maharaj says there's one central principle, and that is that only God and His Son can grant liberation. Wherever there is a statement made about God in the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan has also kept his Ekantik Sant with him. May it be for liberation, may it be for compassion, may it be to, to eradicate Sobhaus. In Loya 6th chapter, Bhagwan Swami Narayan said that if, so, if you get vicious thoughts, clap your hands and uh, sing aloud or chant aloud Swami Narayan. Nonetheless, also remember great santos like Muktanan Swami, chant Muktanan Swami's name. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has given this formula for having vicious thoughts disappear. He could have just said, just chant my name, but no. Bhagwan Swami Narayan here 239 years ago came on this earth and took a human form and liberated countless souls and after that period after living on this earth for 49 years he went back to his divine abode Akshardham and still remained here through his murtis and according to Gadara 1st chapter 68th Vachnam through his santh Bhagwan Swami Narayan did this for us. Why? Because he knew that the soul is not capable of just sitting in front of my murti and extracting my knowledge and understanding who I am. He will need the sant, the soul will need the sant in order for, for that soul to attain my form and attain my abode, Akshardham. That's why Bhagwan Swami Narayan came here and established this whole parampara of santo, or you can say lineage of santo. And out of the 500 nuns santo, even till this day, we are very fortunate that our lineage, our parampara, comes from Adi Guru, 
सदगुरु श्री मुक्तानंद स्वामी हु भगवान स्वामीनारायण हिमसेल्फ बिलीव्ड टू बी हिज गुरु एज वेल हु भगवान स्वामीनारायण हिमसेल्फ एस्ट नॉट ओनली सोशल क्वेश्चन बट एस्ट रिलीजियस आध्यात्मिक स्पिरिचुअल क्वेश्चन एज वेल भगवान स्वामीनारायण from that lineage of muktanand swami even till this day of our puja guru ji this lineage goes on with rich rich santos developing in puja guru ji's whole garden we can say developing in puja muktanand swami's whole garden we can say and through such kind of santos bhagwan swami narayan does his works Bhagwan Swami Narayan helps others attain ultimate liberation. Not only Muktanan Swami's mandal, but Sadguru Sri Gopan Swami's mandal is currently in lineage here in this world. Currently, Sadguru Sri Brahmanan Swami's mandal, Sadguru Sri, yeah, there is other uh, Santo Brahmanan Swami's, Gunatitanan Swami's mandal, so many mandals like that. so bhagwan has kept himself and the sun together and here in this talk bhagwan is saying only only bhagwan says only god and his sun can grant liberation if the soul wants to become liberated from the cycle of life and death he will have to take the refuge of god and his ekantik sat purush this is without a doubt may one read the vedas may one read the purans may one read the itihas may one read the vachnamurt or swamini vato or gunatitan swami vato gopan swami vato or may one read satsangi jivan or may one read nishkuran kavya but one will have to take the refuge of god meaning bhagwan swami narayan the supreme almighty lord himself and his ekantik satpurush for us our puja guru ji only then will that soul attain ultimate liberation in fact god's sant is greater than even bhav brahma and other deities so when one attains god or his sant or his sant bhagwan says god or his sant then apart from this there is no other liberation for the jeev this itself is ultimate liberation it's all remains in understanding ultimate liberation is not when we release our our when our soul becomes released from this body and we see divine light in bhagwan and satpurush and that's ultimate liberation yes that is something that will happen in the future if we stay on the path of god if we follow the ekantik satpurush's agna but ultimate liberation lies in one's understanding even if one is a 16 year old even if one is a 10 year old even if one is a 50 year and 80 year old but if one understands this talk then ultimate liberation is guaranteed for that soul in bhagwan swami narayan swachram gadada first chapter 14th ante yamati sagati there's a saying that whatever however one's understanding is now that is how it will be at the end meaning however one believes right now one's faith that is the outcome at the end bhagwan swami narayan has explained it in that way in the vachan utkara first chapter 14 so ultimate liberation is by believing <clears throat> that this sant i have received this god i have received there is nothing more else that i need to receive i received everything but in this sentence bhagwan says in fact god's sant is greater than even bhav brahma and other deities now brahma is the creator of the universe it's created the universe this whole universe even science till right now this point has not even reached outside of the solar system man i'm talking about not satellite and still is wandering and wandering how great this whole universe is and the planets and all that astrology all that stuff yet the human mind is still 
unable to fathom the vastness of the universe. That's how big one universe is. And Brahma is the creator of the universe. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying that God Sant is greater than Brahma. Now think about it. To put things into perspective. I want to tell you a story. Uh, let's go back approximately 180 years in time of Sadhguru Shri Gunatitanan Swami. Sadhguru Shri Gunatitanan Swami was sitting in his asan in Junagar. And one of his dif disciples by the name of Bhagwan Das Swami was outside doing some seva. And this one very luminous person comes with an aura and very, 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 very different looking from any normal human. And he tells Bhagwan Das Swami, to come close to him. So Bhagwan Das Swami comes close to him and, and, he, and he bows down to Bhagwan Das Swami and Bhagwan Das Swami is wanting to take his whole, you know, credentials. Who are you? Where are you from? Everything. And Brahma, it was Brahma, the creator of the universe. He had taken a form and had come on earth. And he said, my name, I am Brahma, the creator of the universe, and I would like to have the darshan of Sadhguru Gunati Tanan Swami. So first, Bhagwan Das Swami did not say too much, and he said, you stay here, and I'll be back. And then Bhagwan Das Swami goes inside, where Swami is sitting, and bows down to Swami. Swami says, why have you come, Bhagwan Das Swami? He said that Swami... Uh, Brahma, the creator of the universe, is here for your adarshan. Swami is sitting. Swami says, where is he? Where is he? He said, I have told him to wait outside, Swami. He said, bring him in, bring him in. So by Swami's wish, Brahma is brought in. And Brahma becomes very, very stumped by seeing Swami uh, performs downwards, does his pujan. And then after that, after he is satisfied, Brahma leaves and departs. And then Sadhguru Gunatya and Swami calls Bhagwan Das Swami and says, come close. And after calling him, Bhagwan Das Swami folds his hand and says, Ha Swami. And Gunatya and Swami says, don't bring such kind of Rajogun or Tamoguni people next time to me. Think about it. The, the creator of this universe is Rajoguni and Tamoguni and does not even have the darshan or the seva of a Satpurush who is Gunatit, meaning there's three qualities of Satvagun, Rajogun, and Tamogun. And beyond those three qualities is the state of gunatit. That's why it's called gunatit. And gunatitan and swami, who is beyond those three states and is always and has oneness with Bhagwan Swami Narayan, told Bhagwan Das Swami, his disciple, that do not bring such kind of rajoguni and tamoguni vekli people uh, for darshan again. Don't don't uh, tell them to just go off, because. That Brahma does not have enough merits to even have the darshan of Gunatitan and Swami. But by Gunatitan and Swami's darshan, or by his compassion, he was able to have his darshan. So this is how great God Sant is. If we still put things into perspective, just think how big the universe is and the creator of the universe. Imagine how he is. Imagine his his smartness, imagine his intelligence, imagine his powers, his, his greatness that Bhagwan has given him. Still, when the Ekantik Satpurush comes on this earth, he behaves as a normal human being, eats, walks, talks, does everything, just like a normal human being. Yet, he is greater than such kind of Bao, Brahma, and even other deities then think about how great he is. 
this human is unable to even fathom how great Brahma is, just the mere creator of this one universe, then how can one fathom the Ekantik Satpurush, the Anadi Mukta of Bhagwan Swami Narayan? How can one fathom? How can one put things into perspective? That's why Sadhguru Gopan Swami has uh, said in his Vato that uh, the, uh, the Ekantik Satpurush is Kriya, meaning his activities, his bodily activities cannot be understood. He eats tasty foods, yet he, he, is, he doesn't have any kind of taste. Meaning he doesn't, he, he eats everything tasty, but he has no desires like that. But if someone from the outside looks and says that he's eating tasty foods, then one will think something else because one has not understood the Ekantik Satpurush. But if one understands the Ekantik Satpurush, then one will also understand Bhagwan. That's how great, great of a, of a, you can say, an element the Ekantik Satpurush is. So when one attains God or his Sant, Maharaj says, or, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jew. Meaning there is, if one just keeps thinking that at the end, I will do bhajan and I will do bhakti and I will do seva and I will do all that, throughout my whole life and then attain liberation at the end, that is a misunderstanding. Please understand what I'm trying to say. It's not, we don't have to stop doing bhajan, bhakti, seva, all that stuff needs to be done and that's the only way Maharaj and the Ekantik Satpurush will become pleased upon us and, uh, and bestow the rajipo. That's not going to stop, but the understanding needs to be tweaked. Most of us, 98% of us think that after I do all this, then at the end of my life, I will attain ultimate liberation when my soul is released from this body and it goes to Akshardham. That is a misunderstanding. If one understands I have attained God and His Son and my ultimate liberation is complete, that is true understanding, according to this Vachnambut. So when one attains God or a Sant, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jew. Meaning you don't, we, we don't have to keep trying to find, oh, where can I find liberation? Where can I get liberation? It, that is a misunderstanding. That is wrong. But to have that kind of fulfillment, to have that kind of santosh, to have that kind of very easy going, uh, you can easy goingness. That itself is the very, you can say, starting point of grasping this whole sentence. That itself is ultimate liberation. That's it. We attain God, we have attained Satpurush, we are ultimate liberated. That's it. But what we have to do is we want to make them Raji. We want to please them even more by our character, by our by our speech, by our actions, by our uh, each and every activity. We want to please them. We want to attain the Rajipo. That's something definitely we have to continue to do. That is true understanding. Moving on. Furthermore, only those who have accumulated a great number of merits from performing good deeds receive the opportunity to serve God's son. But those who have a few merits do not. Now, how deep is your bank balance? If we analyze this statement, if you have $1 million in your bank statement, then you can afford a $500,000 home. But if you have $500,000 in your bank statement, you cannot afford a $1 million home. You will have to take many, many loans and it might take a long time to pay off. But it is out of our reach. Let's put it that way. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying that one who has accumulated a great number of merits from performing good deeds receive the opportunity to serve God's Son. That means that's not only in this life, but merits attained from the previous life that we do not have any memory or recollection of. Those good merits 
are all added up in Bhagwan's record books. And Bhagwan gives us this very, you can say, prize of, of, of serving God's son. But those who have a few merits do not. Now from that, there's a story of Puja Bhakt, of Sarangpur. One time Sadhguru Shri Muktanand Swami was in Gadra and he was ba uh, taking a bath in the river. And after ba bathing, he had just gotten out and he was drying himself. And the santos wear two parts. One is a dhotyu, which is the bottom part. And one is a keshu, which is the top part, as you can see here. Now, obviously, you have to wash it back in the river and everything. So Swami put on new fresh clothes. And then he was ready to wash his dhotyu and his keshu. Now, at that time, Puja Bhakt, a devotee from Sarangpur, came and saw that Swami's dhotyu needed to be washed. And Puja Bhakt bent down and was about to touch Swami's dhotyu. Swami stopped him right there. And Swami said, Puja Bhakt, are you a Sankh Yogi or a Karma Yogi? Now, what is Swami trying to convey? A Sankh Yogi is a person who has left this sansar or has completely broken all the connections to the world, meaning family, friends, money, everything, women. Or sorry, a, a Karma Yogi is that. And a Sankh Yogi, oh, sorry, Sankh Yogi is one who has broken connections and a Karma Yogi is one who still has connections with the world. Now, Swami asked, Muktan Swami asked, are you a Sankh Yogi? Or are you a karma yogi? Now Puja Bhakta folded his hands and said that I am a karma yogi, Swami. I still live in sansar. I still have a family, a wife, everything. Then Swami said, don't touch my dhotyu. I will wash it myself. And at that time, something sprung in Puja Bhakta's mind that I am, I do not have the, you can say, merits, luck, fortune to even wash Swami's dhotyu, then from this day onwards, I am completely renouncing the worldly life, the whole family, connections, money, property, land, women, kids, everything. I am renouncing. And now from on, I want to live as a Sankh Yogi. Think about it. This is what he did just because he was not able to wash Swami's dhotyu. Over here in Maharaj's Vat, Maharaj is saying, only those, who have, uh, only those who have accumulated a great number of merits from performing good deeds receive the opportunity to serve God's son. Then think about it, Bhakto, how fortunate we are. We are able to come to Mandir and serve here by vacuuming, by organizing the chairs. I'm giving very, very simple examples and I'll make my way up by sweeping the stage, by serving Hari Bhaktos, by doing what senior Hari Bhaktos say, by following the, uh, the words of Santo, by doing some kind of typing seva for santo or by doing some kind of writing seva for santo or by making something for santo that will that will be used for god any kind of seva which has a connection with god or sant such kind of seva we receive on a daily basis if we want not choose if we want if we want seva we can definitely find it anywhere. If we want to receive Rajipo, we can take it from anywhere. There is no borders and limitations. There is no borders and limitations for Seva. Satsang is open to everyone. Everyone can do any Seva as long as they have the capability 
Let's put it in that way. But, and also, as long as they are told to do that seva. Another thing is, some are not told to do one thing and they do it. That, that doesn't earn the rajipo. But, doing as santos say, that earns the rajipo of Maharaj and Santo. Now we can, we have the opportunity to serve any way, any how. And Puja Bhakta performed this kind of a, uh, you can say, this kind of a, uh, he, this whole event is etched into history because he was unable to touch the dhotyu of Sadguru Sri Muktanand Swami. Then think about it, how much he has realized the maima, the glory of Sadguru Muktan Swami or Adi Guru, meaning Santos in general, and think about how much he has a tenacity to do seva. Then why not take the opportunity and serve Maharaj, serve Puja Guruji, serve Santo, serve Bhakto, and attain the Rajiko and attain Akshardham? Why not? That's a question in our mind. Why not do seva to a attain their blessings. Why not? If Puja Bhakta can do this, we don't have to do all this. We don't have to let go of our family, our friends, or anything like that. All we have to do is call Santos and relate on a one-on-one -on -one basis and ask them if they have any seva for us. If that, can, if that is done, then over here, this statement will match in your life as well. So one should develop affection for God's son, just as one has affection for one's wife, son, parents, or brother. Due to this affection, then, the jiva becomes absolutely fulfilled. Now, there's a Haribhakta that asked Gopan Swami, Santona jiva kalyan kem thai? You know how, how santos will attain liberation because they have renounced the world. They have done everything uh, that they they have become dear to Bhagwan. How can our kalyan, meaning ultimate liberation, be guaranteed just like the sant? This is a devotee asking this question. It's very important for those who are householders. Gopan Swami gave it in one sentence, very simple. He said that. Just how much affection we have for our relatives. We have to develop one hair more affection for Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush. And in that way, you will also attain the same Kalyan that the son has received. Swami gave it in one short but easy method for the Jiva to attain Kalyan. Then why not? Why not take the opportunity? Moving on. Moreover, even if one's wife, son, or other family members are unworthy, and even if they are immoral and vile, in no way would one perceive flaws in them. On the other side, even if the bhakta of God possesses every noble virtue, if he were to utter even a few harsh words, then one would hold a grudge against him for as long as one lives. Bhagwan Swaminarayan's words are, you can say, so practical that Bhagwan has perceived and experienced such kind of uh, things going around in such a short time uh, after um, um, finishing his Kalyana Yatra as Nilkan Verni and then attaining uh, the Gadi uh, by Sadhguru Raman Swami uh, as Sajan Swami. When he started this whole Sampradaya, started to push forward very, very quickly. So many experiences happened on a daily basis. From there, Bhagwan Swami Narayan has extracted such kind of practical, practical events uh, and, 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 ex and put them into the Vachnamrut for the bhaktos of the future to understand. Bhagwan Swaminarayan did not speak the Vachnamrut just for that present time. Bhagwan Swaminarayan did not just write the Shikshapatri just for that present time. Bhagwan Swaminarayan did not verify such kind of scriptures 
that Nan Santo wrote for that time only. But one Swami Narayan looked out for his devotees in the future and is still looking out for his devotees in the future. So that such kind of principles, if one carries throughout one's life, then according to the Shiksha Padri, one will become happy in this life and the life after. Moreover, I'm going to read it one more time. Moreover, even if one's wife, son, or other family members are unworthy, and even if they are immoral and vile, in no way would one perceive flaws in them. I don't think I have to give you an example for this because you probably are experiencing this in some way or another. If, if you have a wife or if you have a son or family members that have very, very bad natures or immoral, immoral meaning may eat meat, may drink alcohol or vile, meaning have very, very vicious natures, in no way would one perceive flaws in them. At the end, when that person comes home, even after drinking alcohol or eating meat, one still feels affection for that person, asks them, do you want to eat something, Take, takes care of them, feels that they are very, very close to them. This is something that is occurring on a constant basis in the world. This is not something that an example needs to be given. But still, Bhagwan Swamiran gives it, so he proves the point of the second statement he's about to make. On the other hand, even if the Bhakta of God, who possesses every noble virtue, noble virtues in the form of dharma, bhakti, gnana, vairagya, mahima, prem, affection, seva, so on and so forth, all those noble virtues, if he were to utter even a few harsh words, then one would hold a grudge against him for as long as one lives. Why? Because one has not accepted that other bhakta, that other sant to be one's own family member. One still perceives one's atma to be different and the other opposite, may it be a sant, may it be a bhakta, householder bhakta, to be different. Due to that, such kind of grudges develop. And this very statement's essence is also in the Vachnamrut Gadrida first chapter, first Vachnamrut. Why, why, we don't, uh, why does one not develop affection for satsang? It is due to one has a bow for the sant because the sant has said something or touched the swabhav of that or the nature of that person. Due to that, one develops in a bow or you can say a bad, bad feeling for that sant. And in this, uh, you can say statement that also matches. But there is a vat, uh, there's a story that I would like to share with you that this very talk is actually true. And it's a uh, Gokharvara Harka Patel, who uh, was not a devotee, but just had some feelings that, about the Swami and Sampraday. And Sadhguru Shri Gunatitan Swami was sitting in the mandir. And this, you can say, Bhagat comes and his feet were a little muddy. And at that time, uh, there must have been a rug or something that was uh, <clears throat> on the ground uh, there for everyone to sit on. Now, this person comes and sits, and his feet were a little muddy, and Gunatya and Swami saw that. So he said that, Bhagat, why don't you first wash your feet and then come in and sit so that this rug does not become uh, dirty? That's all Swami said, and politely, not any in not even any rude way. And he was this person was a little head, you know, it had a little bit of status, power, money, all that stuff. Due to that, he felt insulted, and he said, and he went away, and he he left the sabha. Then Gunath and Swami thought that what had happened, but Gunath and Swami said this there was no major situation yet. He went away. So Gunatya and Swami sent some devotees to call him back. And he said, why did Gunatya and Swami tell, tell me to wash my feet? Why did he, how could he tell me? Does he know who I am? Such kind of power, such kind of status, something in the world, you know. And 
after those bhaktos came back and conveyed the message to Gunath and Swami. And Gunath and Swami stood up himself and went to Harka Patel and told him, you know, I did not mean anything. I just wanted you to sit after washing your feet so that the rug would not become dirty. He said, how can you tell me to wash my feet? I'm not washing my feet. And he never came back into satsang just because Swami has said these words. This is the type of affection that Harka Patel had for satsang and Swami. Now, my question to you, or I can even say us, is that do we have such kind of affection for Maharaj, Puja Guruji, Santo and Bhakto? Or is it something different? Does our affection match Harka Patel's affection? We also have to think, right? That if I'm told such things or something maybe even insulting, this was not insulting, but some insulting words, then will I break away from satsang? And that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying to develop very, very firm and strong foundations inside so that nothing can shake our faith in satsang. That's what he wants us to do. That's something that has to be done. Because in this world, there's going to be many obstacles. But putting the obstacles aside and focusing on our spiritual path is the main focus of life. And that's what we have to do. If that is done, then everything else will be conveyed and everything else will be done. Nonetheless, moving on. If a person has such such an attitude, then in no way can he be said to have as much affection for the bhakta of God as he does for his relatives. And he does not attain liberation. Bhagwan Swaminarayan says he will not attain liberation. Furthermore, the greatness of the sant is indeed as much as I mentioned earlier. Yet, even after attaining God and his sant, some people still harbor the doubt, will I attain liberation or not? What can, be set, what can be the reason for this? Well, in his past lives, that person had not attained God or his son, nor had he served them. Thus, this is a new experience for him, which will bear fruit in his subsequent lives. If, on the other hand, a person had attained God and his son and had served them in his past lives, lives then in this life, his affection for the bhakta of God would never diminish, nor would he waver in his faith. Even if his disturbing thoughts related to lust, anger, or avarice persisted, his faith in God would not dissolve. What can be said then about his faith not faltering due to some other person's influence? In fact, even if his own mind were to try to sway him, from his faith, he would still not be swayed. Such a person's resolve can be said to be like of Nath Bhakta and like Vishnu Das, Hemraj Shah, Bal Chandra Shet, and like Kashi Dash and Damodar. When a person possesses such resolve, it should be known that this person has been a devotee of God in a past life. This ends the Vachnamad Gridara. Gadrida, middle chapter 59. Out of all these names that Bhagwan Swaminarayan mentioned of the devotees, Damodar Bhakta, I want to highlight him a little more because a sadhu, something must have happened, slapped Damodar Bhakta in the face. And then they went their ways and started to do their seva. And word reached Maharaj's ears that this sadhu had slapped Damodar Bhakta. So Maharaj was worried that Damodar Bhakta, what, he's not going to break away for it. Satsang, what will happen? What will happen? Obviously, Bhagwan knew, but just the Charitra. So Bhagwan called Damodar, Damodar Bhakta in the assembly and said that this Swami has slapped you, Bhakta Raj. Uh, are you okay? Damodar Bhakta's understanding was so high that that is why his name is mentioned here in the Vachnamrut. He said, Maharaj, if my family, my wife, son, 
or any other relative were to slap me, I wouldn't have develop. I wouldn't have even thought or even had any kind of other thoughts um, of of dismay or any kind of ill feelings. Then how could I develop any ill feelings for the sadhu of you or your sadhu who has slapped me? Because this sadhu is my relative. Then how could I do such kind of understanding? Was you can say given here and displayed by Damodar Bhakta. That's why Bhagwan Swami Narayan became pleased and even remembered him in the Vajnan Ruth, and his name is etched forever in history. So, this ends the Vajnan Ruth. Nonetheless, uh, for all of you, Sadhguru Gunatitan Swami Vato, it's regarding um, company and how one should keep it. So, you can read it in the PDF packet. And finally, Sadhguru Sri Muktan Swami's Charitra. Uh, before he had taken uh, the path of uh, a sadhu, his whole history of uh, pretty much uh, how he became a sadhu and everything like that is mentioned. Uh, this is the course eight packet. Uh, if you don't have the course, you can find it. Uh, you can email us at loyadamnj at the rate gmail .com. So this is our course eight. Next week uh, will be a, just a review week or another presentation. And the week after, we will continue with course number nine, Katha uh, Dhanvai Puja Rushi Swami. Saying this, my humble, Jai Swami Narayan.